Good morning traders, Steve here from Jackrabbit Trader and in this video we're going to look at our portfolio for August 3rd, 2019. So the first thing I always do when we're evaluating where we're going with the portfolio and what we want to proceed with and how we want to manage it is these market cycles and I've talked about them in the past. Um, you know, I, I put a video out on YouTube that kind of goes over the ins and outs uh, of that very briefly um, but I wanted to spend some time here and really look at it because I think it's super important to understand that you can't continue to trade the same way over and over um, regardless of where the market is okay that used to be the way I thought perfectly honest I used to just follow my methods and I would have some really good months and then some really bad months and the reason was because I wasn't taking into account uh, where the market was how the market was reacting and instead I was just saying you know what I found stocks that are breaking out I'm buying every stock that breaks out or most of the stocks that are breaking out and they're gonna outperform because they're breaking out and the market's not you know or whatever the the rationale may be and over the years and more specifically in the last year or so um, I've started looking at these market cycles and, and trying to really understand, you know, when it's time to, to, to go all out and play offense and when it's time to play defense. And you'll see that, that this is one of the charts that I have, um, you know, that I look at pretty much daily. And all it is is a chart of the SPY on the daily. OK, so it's not a weekly. It's a daily SPY chart. And I know we talk here about, you know, trading everything on the weekly, um, not being involved during the market during the day um, and you could still follow along with this chart and annotate this chart you know at night or on the weekends or whatever it may be but at least then you have an idea of where we're headed and where the market's headed so again there's a chart of SPY on the daily uh, with the 8 day exponential moving average and the 21 day exponential moving average uh, plotted 8 day is white 21 day is blue and if we zoom in a little bit here you can see that um, you know, what we're really trying to do is annotate the chart when the SPY closes or is below the 21 day or above the 21 day. All right. And as long as it stays above the 21 day, we want to follow our process. That's the process that we've outlined, the process I go over in the weekly process uh, trading e course. And when it's below the 21 day is when we have to get a little bit more nimble, a little bit more aggressive in taking profits. Um, a little bit more aggressive in hedging the portfolio um, and maybe a little bit more active in the markets, you know, on the uh, on the uh, normal market hours. So you can see if we go back to the middle of May or the beginning of May, uh, the market closed below the 21 day moving average that started what I consider a red cycle. So we want to play defense, right? We're, we're in a bearish or a pullback uh, type of market. Um, and we're looking to then sell the rips back towards the 21 day moving average, right? So as we go back up to the 21 day, we want to use that as a guide to say, okay, maybe we want to take some more profits if we have any long positions or potentially put a market hedge on, right? Comes back down, we take the, the hedge off. As we go back up, all right, back up to the 21 day, back down, take the hedge off, all right, back up maybe not closing as high as or is as strongly as we'd like to see put on a hedge take it off all right and this is one that I got a little aggressive with um, and I'll go over that uh, in a new video coming out I think in a week or two for my performance for uh, July but ultimately I put a hedge on here and never took it off took a giant loss and you'll see that in my portfolio in a minute so here we are, you know, now we, we go back above the 21 day moving average, right? And we stay there. And this is now where we want to buy on the dips or just really follow our process until something changes. So here we go. We're above the 21 day, above the 21 day, you know, maybe a couple of blips here below the eight day. And the eight day for me is more of just a take notice type of thing. Um, you know, you can see that we trend for a long time above the eight day and then ultimately break down. So that's like, all right, you know, something's different now. Let's see what happens. And sure enough, we get back above it. But ultimately, two or three days later, we close below. So the eight day for me is just like stop, take notice, 
you know, the shot across the bow that everybody always talks about. Uh, and for me, it's just, you know, let's be some, let's be cautious here. Um, so we kind of got a little bit of an eight day break here, maybe another one back over here. Um, but ultimately always resolved lower or higher. And even last week, I, you know, in the market recap, or I'm sorry, the Jackrabbit uh, report, we ultimately closed at all-time highs on Friday. And I was like, all right, you know, here we go. Um, we, we maybe shook some people out. Here we go. We're going higher. Talked about a couple of nice trade alerts. I actually took some in Raytheon and E-Trade. And then this week opened, then we went, you know, straight down. So... Uh, you never know, and it's really just about, you, you can't predict it, right? I mean, we do the best with the information we have at the time, and you, you, that's all you can do. And the only other option is, you know, you just have to be quick in adapting to market conditions. And that's why I really love these uh, these two moving averages on this chart. It just kind of takes the guesswork out for me and, you know, tries to always make sure that I'm on the right side of the market. Um, so, you know... On Wednesday, on the Fed report, we ultimately closed below the 21-day moving average. I sent out, I think, an alert uh, to everyone, actually, uh, late in the afternoon, just to say, hey, we could be switching into a you know red market cycle. I'm actually uh, putting on some puts, um, you know, just as a you know, here it is. This is what's happening, and and for a lot of the day on Thursday, I was wrong, right? But I used the closing prices, right? I'm using those uh, closing levels, even on the daily, to try and to manage those trades. So I think when I tweeted out on Twitter, um, you know, I was getting long some puts, and I was using the highs as my stop. So really, I would have tried to hold. Uh, you know, as long as we held below this 302 level, I felt more comfortable to be in some kind of protective mode in the portfolio. And like I said, for a lot of the day on Thursday, you know, I looked wrong. I was wrong. At one point, I think the market was up 30 points. Um, I was completely wrong. Absolutely got uh, whipsawed. And then at one point in the afternoon, everything just collapsed. And, you know, I think I even sent a, a message out to the email subscribers uh, just to say, Hey, taking my puts off here as we push back down into uh, this 295 level, and you could see that uh, right in here on the on the weekly chart. You know, I was saying, well, you know, this is a good spot maybe to take some profits, uh, 294, 295, um, and took those those puts off, and then ultimately Friday market continued lower, and then tried to bounce at the end of the day. So I don't think this is the low. Um, you know, but what I'm looking for now is let's see how we react as we come back towards this 21 day. Do we go sideways and allow the 21 day to, to catch up and then break down? Or does this try and bounce um, where amateur traders say, hey, you know, it's time to get in and then ultimately roll over? Or the other option is, you know, this is a quick fake out that, that traps a lot of shorts and now we, we skyrocket higher. So Always try and understand the different ways that uh, the market could react. Um, but again, for me, based on my process and what I've outlined, until I see the SPY close back over the 21-day moving average, you know, I'm uh, I'm I'm cautious here. And and that you know that was uh, kind of how we reacted in the, in the portfolio this week. You know, you could see here in the beginning of the of the week, I put on Raytheon and uh, E-Trade. And then uh, come the 31st, here's the put trade that I talked about. All right, the October 295 puts at 660. And I flipped them out the following day um, at 825. So, you know, each put basically made me $185 or $165. Um, but don't forget, I trade four accounts. So it's where it gets a little bit dicey. And I actually had four puts on, one for each account. Um, actually, I had six total on, but... Regardless, uh, we're just looking at one account here. So, uh, and then, you know, as we went through the week, you know, I said, hey, you know, this is starting to get a little bit more bearish, right? We talked about, you know, we broke below the, the uh, we're starting to come into the contact with the eight day um, and we started trailing some stops higher. And ultimately, as the week ended up, 
you know, we ended up taking off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine trades, including or not including the uh, SPY put. So I'll show you what that looks like on the portfolio page or the uh, you know spreadsheet that I have here, and I'll put a link in the email um, for this so you guys can get some access to it and you know save it as your own or do whatever you want with it. But I mean, this is my go-to, and this is you know kind of outlines where I started, where I'm ending. Um, my open profit, my total return, and you know this is a trade by trade basis for the year. Um, and you know you'll see that I try and project out where I think I'm going to be, and you know what my win rate is. I want to see that a little bit higher, maybe. Um, even though we're kind of working on a, uh, I think we're 61 and six right now, if I remember right. But. You know, this is this is my go-to, and this kind of keeps me in line and keeps me in check. And you'll see that all those trades that we just talked about uh, are, are are right here with those closes. And here's my 400 for the puts. So, you know, again, you don't necessarily have to hedge your portfolio. You could just be in the mindset that you want to take more profit. So, I just want to take a look at these trades here, um, and take a look at the trades that I have in the uh, in the remaining in the portfolio and then uh, you know we're not going to do any trade alerts this week because there's no there's no reason to right we're in a we're in a red market cycle um, that's not my style that's not what we're trying to do and you know the, the, ultimately the, the whole point of this is we're trying to do this to make money so let's go ahead to open let's pick an account and you can see here on the left that I sort normally by profit and loss open all right so I know um, which ones are lagging and which ones are doing well and then we'll go over here to the weekly chart and now let's just go through the existing positions we have all right and then like I said we'll go through the ones that we closed and I just want to show you on the ones we closed that you know there's no reason it's just really I'm closing them because of the market all right they didn't break down or they didn't do anything like that so DRI uh, and you can see here, let's see, let's turn on all accounts. So here you go. We, we bought 47 on this breakout, consolidated for some time, broke out again, and we added to that position. All right. And now here we come, you know, big red bar, but you know, I, I'm not up enough in the trade necessarily to maybe take it off. Um, you know, I'm up $55. I'm more than willing to just let this one kind of sit here and maybe see what happens. Does it come down to 116 and bounce? All right, because I've taken a good amount of risk off the table. I'm, I'm probably 50% cash right now. Um, and if we can get a bounce and if we can get maybe some puts on uh, to protect the rest, then I'm probably going to be pretty much neutral in the market. Um, so I'm willing to kind of let these just work and, and see what happens. So my stop right now is 116, which is the low of this consolidation here. And, you know, we talk about um, when we add, we usually trail a stop, right? So after this sideways consolidation, this breakout, we we're able to add to our position and then trail that stop up from 107 to 116. And that's just the way I manage uh, risk there. CHD. Okay, you know, again, a breakout, moved up, moved up, ultimately had this new breakout. I decided because of the market condition and where we're at that I wanted to take profits in that situation instead of adding to the to the uh, position. Pulled back, tested the 72 level, bounced a little bit, now pulling back again. So uh, anything below 72, I'm out of CHD. Adobe. All right, Adobe broke out, put a stop right here at 270. I like this stop because it basically comes back and also old resistance becomes new support, right? So we, we had resistance back here in September of 18. Now it was used again as support for this uh, consolidation in June. Broke out. And now here we come, you know, back down. So, uh, we'll again let this one just work. You know, if it comes down to 270, then you know breaks below it, then I'll get out of it. TSCO. 
All right, you could see here that I bought, I, I must have missed this first breakout. All right, so then I bought here at 59, 59 shares at 109. All right, and now again, stops in place. We have some a little bit of cushion before we get down there. We're trading 107. Uh, stop is 98. And when we size the position, you know, we sized it to this stop level. So I feel comfortable in where we're at. And I'm just going to let this one work and see what happens in the next coming week or two weeks. Um, and again, if it breaks it down, then it breaks down and I get out. And that's just following the process. And, you know, that's one of the reasons that my win rate is so high is, you know, I'm more than happy to take some some profits off the table and put some money in my pocket. Um, but ones that aren't working, I'm more than happy to give them some time um, to to work. ADP, okay, same similar situation, right? But look what's happening here in ADP. Is it actually breaking down, or is it really just setting up maybe another sideways move? It tested this low here around 162, all right. So does it bounce here? Does it continue lower to 155? I have no idea. All right, but ultimately we have some some risk parameters in place, and we'll see what happens. Same thing with UMP. Okay, this is maybe just a big consolidation. All right, came up, hit the 180 level, and pulled back. And now it's got some room down to 164. Okay. Again, you know these are all different things that you that we that we look at. We look at how we're managing stops. And ultimately, as hard as it is, you have to be patient, especially when you're in these, um, you know, red market cycles where, you know, you're going to lose some money in your stock positions and your long positions. But, you know, the, the ultimate goal here is to try and make it up in the hedge. And if you're not willing to hedge, then maybe, yeah, UMP is bouncing off uh, a, a resistance level. So maybe at this point, you just take the small loss of one hundred and fifty dollars um, on, you know, 36 shares. And you move on and you wait for a better time for me the issue that i've always had is you know the market pulls back um you're sitting 100 percent cash um, because you've done what you're supposed to do and then the market skyrockets and it leaves you uh you know behind a little bit so i try and always have some kind of long exposure on as long as it meets my criteria as long as it's staying above support levels because when the market goes I want to at least have port, a portion of my money go with it. Um, and I feel more comfortable to be able to hedge to protect against that uh, than uh, leaving myself 100% cash. But I'm not going to lie to you. You know, it, it was uh, it's not an easy thing to do. It re requires some involvement during the day, um, especially when you're trading put options. They can move just as quick um, and kind of go against you. So you can be in a situation where your puts are going one way. Uh, you know, maybe you're losing money on the puts and you're losing money on the on the stock. Um, and, you know, so it's a double whammy. So not not ideal. It happens. And it's just something that you just have to learn how to manage. And we can go over that. You know, I'll, I'll try and do a better job of sending out some some alerts if I'm putting those SPY puts on. Uh, you know, and kind of give you my rationale behind why I'm doing it. But again, it really just comes back to that first chart with the 21 day moving average. Hilton, all right, sideways consolidation broke out. Now pulling back, looked like maybe we we're going to develop some kind of support level here and head back up to 101. Now maybe looking like we're going to come back and test the 87. Again, previous resistance becomes new support. All right, just understand how that works. AME, all right, nice breakout, and then ultimately has been trailing off. Stop down here at 81, 85, and again, previous resistance, new support. Comcast broke out. Now coming back, maybe uh, we're back below these. Actually, no, we're not. I was, I thought we were back below these all-time highs for the, or the previous highs. Uh, back here, but we're, we're actually kind of right in the range, all right? So some support here on uh, Comcast. Ultimately, I can close below 41, and I'll be out of that trade. Raytheon, all right, again, last week we came in, we thought, we thought, hey, you know what? Markets are looking good. You know, this is a, a reversal, maybe a trend reversal. We broke this downtrend line ultimately broke out all right and then sure enough this week just 
right back into the range uh, and close to our stop at 173. So, you know, maybe another a big down week here. We take that loss and we just move on. Honeywell, similar situation. Again, loving that when my support levels line up with previous resistance levels, to me that just reinforces them that much more. Um, but anything under 164, I'll be out of that trade. And E-Trade, again, similar situation uh, with Raytheon. We were looking, or I was looking at it as if it was breaking out of this very tight consolidation. Um, had some resistance levels above, thinking, you know, maybe I got a little too cute, trying to pick up a few bucks. Um, but ultimately, I was thinking, hey, we'll hit 53, and then we have a good amount of room to run until we get back to maybe 66 or even 61. But right now, trade's not working, and again, under 4486 I'll be out of that trade so um, when you look at the grand scheme of things let's go over to here we have a total of nineteen hundred and fifty five dollars and ninety five cents in open uh, loss I guess you could say and you could see those positions here and again I have to figure out a better way to do this but um, these are only for the, the accounts that I own all right I trade other money uh, family members money um, so that's why the numbers on the think or swim don't necessarily jive but um, maybe just for consistency and clarity I gotta just keep them all the same I don't know um, but for my accounts here we are uh, you know with the with that loss uh, and again 1955.95 in loss and if it means I got to take them all off then I take them all off but um, let's see how we go forward here and if we can get uh, a move back up to the upside and maybe get a opportunity to take it off when when the market was kind of pulling back in um, in June or I'm sorry yeah in uh, May you know these even though the market was coming back down you'll see that I was actually able to take some of my long positions off for profits and we'll go down to that area and you know basically in here you know if you if you look at you know what I was able to take off um, you could see I had a couple nice put trades here uh, some hedges I had one two three four five times I hedged uh, for you know maybe close to two or three thousand dollars um, but in the same respect, I was able to take some Aflac off, right? FIS off, RSG off. And I only had one loss in Nike in that time period. So uh, just because the SPY is pulling back doesn't automatically you know, mean that your, your positions are going to hit their stops. It's just you're going to have to experience a little bit of uh, pain maybe in, in the uh, interim before it starts moving higher. Or if they do hit your stops, then so be it. They hit your stops, and, and that's part of the game. Um, so that's the open positions I have and and the um, how I'm moving forward. Again, not really looking to uh, add any new risk, looking for ways to figure out how to hedge until we get back above that 21-day moving average. But let's take a quick look at some of the, what are we doing here? Some of the trades that I closed in the last seven days. Um, and just so you can see that, you know, there's really no rhyme or reason. It's just more that the market is starting to roll over and I want to take whatever profits I have. All right. So you can see here DHR. I took a little bit off at this 143 level. All right. Again, just for more of a managing risk. But here we are now this week breaking below the 139.50 level. And I said, you know what? I'm going to take the little bit of profit that I have because... I don't want to go from 139 all the way down to 129. All right. So on that trade, uh, we closed out, let's see, DHR, nine, another $96 on top of the money from earlier in the month to 259. So 96, 259. Uh, you know, not a bad little trade there. Oh, maybe $350 in profit. All right. Disney. I mean, I'm a long-term believer in Disney with the, with all the new, uh, you know, the Marvel side of it. I'm a big, uh, I shouldn't say comic book fan, but uh, definitely love the love the movies. 
Um, so what they're doing with with the whole uh, franchise and, and bringing all those uh, uh, characters and, and, and franchises over, um, opening their streaming service, you know, I, I'm a big fan, but ultimately I'm about here to make money and um, I'm not going to fall in love with a company just because I want to. So here was Disney. You know, we, we were long uh, a good amount of shares um, from down at this level and then ultimately took them off. Okay. And, you know, the, the fact is we, we just wanted to take profits. All right. We had a nice move out of this, out of this little wedge pattern. All right. Had a big move on earnings. Earnings coming up, I think, this week in Disney. And for me, it wasn't worth it wasn't worth the uh, the risk. Microsoft. All right, breakout. And again, would have thought I would want to see this run. Say, you know, the old me would have said, hey, you know what? This is in a great, you know, it's staying up by the highs. We want to we want to uh, continue staying along it. But ultimately, it could be down here at 123. So uh, you'll see that, you know, right, right here, I took profits pretty close to each other. Again, just another way that I keep that keep that uh, win rate high and keep those profits high. CF, all right, had some earnings this week, and it was just time to take it all off. All right, I basically almost got to uh, the highs. I was trying to get to fifty six, um, and I took two sets of CF off here. If I can open that up somehow, yeah. So you'll see, I sold thirteen one time at forty nine. I'm sorry, 14 at 49, and that was before earnings. And then they had earnings. I sold the remaining 13 at 5350. All right. In this kind of situation, take the money when you can get it. All right. There's no point in sitting here and hoping that it's gonna continue higher. You have profits. You have money in the. You know, basically you're laying in the street. Um, don't walk over it. You know, especially in times like this when there's. You know, when there's more money in the street and more money to be had, then, you know, if you want to let them run a little bit, so be it. But right now, uh, you know, that street sweeper is coming and uh, you're trying to run in front of it to grab some dollars. And, and, and right now, you know, taking profits and, and, and protecting is the name of the game, especially with that red market cycle. You know, eBay, all right, came up, you know. I could say, oh, well, let's, you know, it should get to 44 or 40. Well, yeah, but it could also get to 3850. So why don't you take those profits? All right. Uh, let's see. I keep going to the wrong tab here. Visa, CF, Twitter, Costco. Visa. I'll just go through these quick. All right. Breaking down below a previous day, week's high or low. All right. And on this one, I had a, a, a order in. All right. So I've been trailing orders up, um, you know, to the previous week's low. Took it out. And it did that. I didn't, I'll be honest. When Visa sold, I didn't even know it sold. I was confused uh, where it went, um, and I had to go back and look because I forgot I put an order in, and uh, you know, just what happened. Same thing here with Costco. I had an order in below the lows or below the yeah, below the lows from the previous week, right around two seventy eight. You can see that here, and I sold uh, four my remaining four shares at two seventy eight, and now we're trading two seventy two. Uh, Starbucks. All right. Oh, this was last week. What was the other one I said? Twitter, Costco. Sorry. Twitter. Okay. Here, Twitter looks great. I mean, I would be shocked if Twitter didn't get the 46. But in the same respect, if you go back to where I was at, Twitter. Right? I had Twitter there and Twitter there. So I had almost a $500 profit in Twitter. I That's something I have... For me, with my size account, um, I can't walk past. You know, uh, it's hard to uh, it's hard to uh, you know justify leaving five hundred on the street for maybe a, a better situation. All right, so that's where that's how I went and managed the portfolio. Again, once I realized that we're starting to roll over, now it becomes you know let's take profits and you know let's take them in the in names that are up big. Um, and like I said, are there more, uh, gains to be had in some of them? Maybe, you know, was there more to lose in them? Maybe. Um, but you can only do what you can do and you can only, uh, act on the information that you have at hand at the time. Um, and I can't predict the market. Nobody can predict the market. 
and this is the way I go about managing my, my portfolio. And, you know, again, I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope it gives you a little insight. Um, I apologize if this one's maybe a little all over the place, but there's a lot of things going on right now. Uh, in future videos at this time, we would go and look at maybe some trades that I want to enter. Um, but that's not where we're at right now. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to sit here and, and tell you something that I'm not doing. And I try and, you know, obviously make it as transparent as possible and you know i know like i said there's some confusion maybe between uh you know this spreadsheet and what i'm actually trading but the the end of, you know at the end of the day no matter what you're trading how many shares you're trading the process is still the same all right so don't get hung up on the money amount um while it is nice and, and the shares just look at the process like look at how we're going about adapting our trading to market conditions all right and i think that was something that in the past i had a very difficult time with um and you know it took me a couple years and some training from uh some some very successful people um and i'm trying to pass that along to you and while our styles may be different um you know john borman david blair they're basically the ones that kind of honed my process and um, you know, I look at this as a combination of the two. You know, John is definitely more of a trend follower and, and will allow those positions to just work. David Blair, you know, is in the market every single day. And, you know, I'm part of his mentorship. Um, and I love being part of it. And, you know, when you mesh the two together, this is kind of what you get. Um, and, you know, as I said, you know, there's definitely opportunities here. But at the end of the day, the name of the game is to make some money um, so far this year I've had my best year yet um, at this time I'm up thirteen thousand dollars and uh, hopefully with you know there you know four or five months of the year to go uh, the goal is to hit 20 all right and that's the goal for this year and then next year it's a bigger goal and you know you just keep going and you keep going and um, but the process is always the same you know and, and like I said the uh, the thing I want you guys to uh, try and understand is you know, I'll keep it as as uh, transparent as possible. Um, but the method is the, the the technical analysis and the method itself, whether you trade options, stock, forex, you know, whatever it may be, um, that's its own thing. It's the it's the mental side of it and being able to adapt to the market conditions. Um, you know, basically just understand that you are you know a follower of the market. That's all you can do. You can't change what happens. You can't you know, force the market to do anything it's not going to do. Um, so either you're going to follow along with it or you're going to get run over. And uh, I'd rather follow along and, and be profitable. So, uh, again, can't say that it's always easy. Can't say that, you know, your head doesn't get in the way. And, and you know, as I said in a future video, uh, a couple weeks, we're going to talk about this uh, $2,300 loss that I had here. Um, and that's factored in to that, you know, $13,000 profit. So, again, fully transparent. I would love to be able to say, hey, I don't have giant losses, but at the end of the day, I'm just as human as you and uh, everyone else. So um, let my ego get in the way there and, and it cost me. And, you know, you learn from it, you move on and you and you just keep plugging away. So, uh, again, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, we'll have another one out next week. Any questions or comments, let me know via email um, and we'll see you later. Take care.